Hey y'all, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Jasmine Antoine. If you're new here and if you are new, I'm so happy to have you. If you end up enjoying the content here, of course I'm encouraging you to subscribe. Make sure you also hit that notification bell as well so that you're notified when new content is available. And if you'd love to keep up with me and receive even more encouragement, go to follow me on IG and maybe even on TikTok. I post over there to encourage you. The Lord has been having me in Jonah lately. We are going to talk about Jonah's story and I am so excited to share this with y'all, as I feel like I am with a lot of videos, but <laughs> this is a really, really good check for our hearts, and yeah, let's just get into it. Y'all know the story of Jonah, right? God gives Jonah an assignment to go to Nineveh, and Jonah says no. Jonah decided to run away from the Lord and get on a ship to just go in the opposite direction of where the Lord wanted him to go. While Jonah is on a ship, God causes a great storm. The people on the ship are tripping. They're trying to figure out what's the reason behind this storm. They end up realizing that it's Jonah's fault, like he's reason for the storm because God's trying to get Jonah's attention so then Jonah tells them just throw me overboard and the storm will stop so they throw Jonah overboard God then sends a big fish to swallow Jonah God did this to save Jonah to keep him safe from drowning inside the belly of this big fish Jonah gets humbled and so he repents he asks the Lord for forgiveness he's like God you've been gracious to me you saved my life from drowning please forgive me and so then God commands the fish to spit Jonah out and then Jonah gets the same message or assignment again God tells him to go to Nineveh and preach the message that I tell you. So then Jonah goes to Nineveh and he tells them, God says you need to repent. And if you don't, in 40 days, God is going to demolish Nineveh. The people repented. So God relented from the disaster that he threatened them with. And this is where we pick up y'all. This is the message that God has laid on my heart and I'm excited to share with y'all. Jonah gets upset that they received God's grace and forgiveness. In Jonah chapter four, verse two, he says, please Lord, this is this is what I thought. While I was still in my own country, this is why I didn't want to go here. This is why I fled to Tarshish. This is why I did not want to do what you told me to do because I knew that you were a gracious and a compassionate God. You're slow to anger, abounding in love, and you're one who relents from sending disaster. This is why I didn't want to go because I wanted the Ninevites punished. I didn't want them receiving your grace. When I read this, I laughed. I mean, I laughed, I cracked up because one, I could relate to Jonah. I have been so angry before that I told God, it's like, I'm ready to go. Like, you could just take me, like, let's go. I also laughed at this because there has been a prideful part within my heart that wanted God to deal with those who hurt me in a crazy way. The people who really, really hurt me, I'm talking about like evil, evil type of hurt. Like, I wanted God to really deal with them. Like, not just like, okay, you know, I'm feeling, I'm feeling convicted. Let me just, you know, repent. Let me just, you know, ask God for forgiveness. And you know, I just don't do it again. No, I wanted God to punish them. I wanted God to really deal with them. And that was a very prideful thing to have in my heart because I'm over here still a hot mess in many ways, holier, okay, better than I was, you know, months ago, last year, praise God, and years ago, even just last week, the Lord is doing a good work within me, y'all. <laughs> but I'm over here still messing up, you know, still still doing things that, that aren't right. I still keep slipping up over here. I keep forgetting things over here. You know, I keep messing up, but I'm praising God for his grace and mercy all day long. I'm thanking God all day long. Thank you for not throwing in the towel on me, but I'm not wanting God to let others off of the hook. Now, of course, with my lips, I wasn't saying those things, but in my heart, I was like, God, I want you to really deal with them. I, I mean, I really want you to deal with them. I want them to get punished. This is how Jonah was feeling. The people of Nineveh were ruthless. They were cruel. They were filled with so much evil. There was so much evil in the land. They were enemies of Jonah. Jonah wanted the Ninevites to be consumed with fire. He wanted them to get what they deserved. Likewise, some of us who are God's daughters, and maybe you're a guy watching this, God's son, but we are God's daughters wanting God to deal with people in a way that is crazy. Some of us are like Jonah. We thank God for his mercy all day long. We thank him for his kindness. We thank him for not treating us as we deserve. But for those who did us dirty, who did us real dirty, for those who left us for dead, we are wanting those people to be consumed with fire. We are wanting God to deal with them harshly. How is that godly? How is that having the heart of God? We can't just carry the message of God and we can't just have assignments from God and not have his heart. We are to have his heart as well. And not only should we have his heart, we are called to it. We're called to look like Christ. We're called to be imitators of God. We're called to have his heart that's slow to anger, abounding in love and one that relents from disaster. We're called to have this type of heart. After Jonah gets upset, God asks him, 
is it right for you to be angry? In the scripture, right after God asks him, is it right for you to be angry? The Lord does some things with creation and it's really cool how he's working everything out. But he, he did all this to teach Jonah a lesson. And in this just few scriptures, the Lord causes a plant to grow in one day and then the next day it's gone. This plant was to give Jonah some shade from the heat because it was like super, super hot. God then appointed a worm to attack the plant and the plant died. And so Jonah didn't have any shade anymore and he got upset. And so then that's when God asked him a second time, is it right for you to be angry? And so then Jonah says, yes, yes, I'm angry. I'm angry enough to die. God then tells Jonah this, you cared for a plant that you didn't even labor over. It came in the night and it perished in the night. May I not care about these people? May I not care about the Ninevites that has over 120,000 people, including children? You cared about a plant. May I not care about these people? Sisters, is it right for you to be angry when God relents from sending disaster? Is it right for you to be angry when God lets your enemies off the hook after they repented? Is it right for you to be angry when they don't get what they deserve? It isn't. It isn't right for us to be angry when any of that happens. Luke 15 verse 10 says this, I tell you in the same way, there is joy in the presence of God's angels over one sinner who repents. Angels are rejoicing when someone repents. Angels are, I don't know. I just imagine them turning up. I just imagine them having a huge party when someone repents, when they turn away from sin, when they give their life to Christ, when they decide to grow in Christ, when they decide to mature, when they decide to obey what the Lord is telling them to do, when they decide to mature in their relationships and when they decide to mature in their work, when they decide to grow in Christ, when they decide to live a holy life. When they decide to be holy as their father in heaven is holy, angels are rejoicing. We need to join in with the angels in rejoicing when someone repents. It doesn't matter if they came to Christ. It doesn't matter if they knew Christ. It does like whatever the repentance is. If they came to Christ or if they already knew Christ, but they're repenting from something that they messed up with or something that they have struggled with for some time, it doesn't matter what it is. Whatever the repentance is, we need to join in with the angels and rejoice. Try hard to not think, that they don't deserve it. Try hard to not have those thoughts because guess what? None of us deserve it. None of us deserve God's mercy. None of us deserve his grace. None of us deserve his loving kindness. None of us deserve it. I don't deserve his grace. I don't deserve God's mercy. I have done some crazy things. I have done some things that, man, God, in my mind, I'm like, whew, if, if I was God, but of course I'm not. But if I like... I probably would have thrown it in the towel. Like, you you crazy. You know what I'm saying? But God in his mercy has been so good to me. He's been so good to me. He has relented from sending disaster in my life many times. And he's going to do the same with those who hurt us. Because that's just who he is. He's a loving God. He's abounding in love. He's slow to anger. and He relents from sending disaster. That's the type of heart we should have. When we're tempted to have thoughts of, you know, they don't deserve it. And man, I wish this and all this other stuff. And they need that and da da da. You know, all this stuff. When all those negative thoughts come through our minds, we need to speak out loud the word of God. The Lord is slow to anger, abounding in love, and one who relents from sin and disaster. Lord, may my heart be like yours. Jesus actually talked about anger in the Bible. He tells people, you've heard, don't murder. I tell you, whoever gets angry is subject to judgment. Murder begins in the heart. Think about Cain and Abel. Cain ended up murdering his brother because he let anger control him. Murder begins in the heart. Think about Esau and Jacob. He wanted to kill his brother because of the grudge and the anger that was within him. Murder begins in the heart. Now, I'm not calling you a murderer, but if you're having thoughts that are really, you know, along those lines, not of wanting to actually do something to the person, but maybe you're wanting God to deal with them in a crazy way, or you're wanting, you know, something bad to happen to them and stuff like that, my encouragement to you is to renounce the spirit of murder. And my encouragement to you is to renounce the spirit of anger. My encourage because there there is a demonic spirit of it. I mean, we we get angry, you know what I'm saying? Like that's that's an emotion, but there's also a demonic side. Renounce those spirits and find find scriptures regarding anger. The like the stories that I just talked to you about. Read those stories out loud. Read what Jesus had to say about anger. Read it out loud and renounce those spirits and ask God to fill you with love towards whoever hurt you and towards whoever those people are. First John is a great book. It talks a lot about God's love and how we should be loving people. And so if you're having a problem with, you know, loving someone, I definitely encourage you to hop in First John. It's a great one. But in First John 
chapter 3, verses 15 and 16. I want to read this to y'all as I'm ending this video. Um, it says, everyone who hates his brother or sister is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life residing in him. This is how we have come to know love. He laid down his life for us. We should also lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. We have brothers and sisters with us in this world. We aren't to hate them. We aren't to hold a grudge within our hearts towards them. We aren't to allow anger to just reside in our hearts. We're to lay down our lives for them. We're to love them. Again, I don't say this message as if I'm perfect. Listen, I'm learning as everyone else is learning. <laughs> but I just want to encourage y'all to not let anger just control you. Don't let anger stay in your heart. Is it right for you to be angry? No, it's not right. God is going to bless people. He's going to prosper them. If they repent, God is going to do amazing things in their lives. Having a sincere apology should be enough for you. That should be enough. That should be more than enough. And if it isn't, we need to come back to what the word of God is saying. You know, what does the word of God teaches us about humility and pride? God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Let's not just carry the message of God and the assignments that he gives us. Let's also carry the heart of God. Let's desire the heart of God more than the message. Let's desire the heart of God more than the assignments, more than the purpose, more than, more than all these other things. Let's desire a heart that is slow to anger, abounding in faithful love, and having a heart that relents from sending disaster. I love y'all. Jesus loves you so much more. I hope to see y'all again in the next video. If you enjoyed this video, please, please, please share it with someone else to encourage them. And if you enjoyed it, let me know down in the comments. Let me know what stood out to you. Let me know what God is speaking to you right now. I'd love to hear from you. Go ahead and like this video as well if you enjoyed it. Just because it helps the algorithm and it pushes this video out to more people. And yeah, y'all. I hope y'all have a blessed day. Look, Christmas is around the corner. Merry Christmas. Bye. Ha, <laughs> ha,